So the vacation plans didn't quite work out for the course of the week. We decided we'd give him a break anyway, as you can might imagine. It was a pretty stressful week for him this week. And so uh, we're, uh, I'm glad to be here covering for him as he takes a well-deserved day off today. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house, to welcome the Holy Spirit, to give our hearts and minds to you and what you have for us this morning. Uh, guide us, direct us, and fill us as you see fit for each of us. In Christ's name, amen. Let's join in the responsive call to worship. The sovereign God of all nations summons us. All of us are offspring of the Most High God. As children of the Eternal One, we seek realities that are yet unseen. God calls us away from speculation to life's realities. People are suffering and dying for their faith. Some are persecuted and betrayed, and some are delivered up and imprisoned. For many, the foundations of life are shaken, and there is no justice or hope to be seen. We come to hear from the divine counsel that we might rise up on the healing wings of God. Our hymn of praise is Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, page 76. Thank you. 
it is easy to get caught up in the world around us that we cannot hear the voice of God or feel the presence of all that is holy. Let us look closely now that we might see ourselves in the presence of God. Let us confess our sinfulness. We confess, O oh God, that we are ignorant about our ways. We allow wickedness to shape and control us. We do not stand for the justice you have called us to share. We do not care enough about those who are poor or give ourselves to the extent you invite. We like to think others should care for us, that life should be easy and free of real work. Help us, Holy One, to see ourselves in comparison to Jesus Christ. Amen. God still rules with justice. God offers new possibilities even to those who have ignored the way of faithful living. God gives us life through forgiveness of our sins. Let us live as servants of the faithful God. Let's stand now for the glory of Patri. Creed. Church, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, be seated. So, time for prayer concerns this morning. Um, we had a wonderful send-off for Gary Stonecipher yesterday. Continue to pray for Pat and uh, the family as they uh, now kind of, I'm sure, crash after a, a very long and, and hard week for them. Um, now, Terry, I think you have something this morning. Well, that's not counting some of the dishes that were brought in 
and dropped off beside what we bought. Uh, we ended up collecting uh, $217. Uh, we ended up 40, $45 and a little bit of change left over. That $45 will go into the main account under the memorial fund. That way we'll have some money in there to start out with the next time this happens because I'm sure it will happen again before too many years down the road. If anybody else would like to donate, give the money to Harry. He's going to be putting it in the bank. And you can see him after the service and give it to him. Thanks, Terry. So, Carol? Um, Pat had mentioned about the insulin that Gary had. Yes, thank you. Um, Gary used Lantus insulin for his diabetes, and she has quite a bit of that left over uh, that uh, is refrigerated and is, is good for use. So uh, if you use Lantus insulin or if you know someone that uses it, uh, be sure and let Pat know uh, she would much rather share it with someone to use that and not have to pay for it than to discard it. And of course, uh, as a refrigerated uh, drug, it has... Uh, uh, it has limited uh, shelf life, although I know insulin, the fact, take, the fact that I take insulin myself, it lasts quite a long time uh, if you keep it refrigerated. So if you can use it or if you know someone in your family or friend or something that uses Lantus, uh, she's got some that she'd like to share. Um, so continue to pray for the McGee family and uh, their needs. I would like to first for my niece Amy. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. Niece Amy has cancer, right? Yes. So pray for Barb's niece Amy uh, in uh, her cancer treatments. So. Others? Just keep Pastor and Angela in your prayers. Um, Phil uh, did get word from his doctor. You know, he talked to us last week about his aneurysm, looked at the scans and stuff, and didn't think they looked that bad to him. And I, we reminded him that he was a pastor, not a doctor. <laughs> And so, sure enough, when he talked to his doctor this week, his doctor told him that it needed intervention. So, at the moment, um, he has another heart physician that he has some experience with that he's trying to uh, contact him as a, a second opinion and uh, has not been able to do that yet, but we'll hopefully hear from him this week and then he'll decide between the two doctors um, which one he prefers and uh, schedule something for that uh, procedure. And of course, we will keep you all informed on what's going on and um, when these kinds of things are going to take place. So, um, so that's the latest, latest word on him. Uh, meanwhile, he's resting at home today. Um, between his doctor and the other events of the week, it was a, a pretty, pretty tough week for him, as you might imagine. So uh, he and Gary were very close, as all of us were with Gary and Pat, particularly those of us from the Northside Church that have known them literally for decades. And uh, so anything else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you that uh, we can bring all of these needs to you, all of our struggles, 
our losses, our own health needs, needs of family and loved ones, friends. We just thank you that we can trust you with all of the concerns of our heart and put them into your hands knowing that you know them even better than we, that you have uh, the plans for them, for your intervention, your care. And we ask you this morning to touch each one of these, to continue to comfort Pat and her family as the all the busyness now is over and probably the true loss of Gary's absence is sinking in more than it has in the last few days. Comfort them in that. Thank you that so much of Pat's family was around her to support her through this and uh, watch over her and her needs through this week. Lord, we just pray for Pastor and Angela as they make the medical decisions that they need to for him. And we just pray that uh, uh, whichever one that he chooses, that you will be on the hands of that doctor as they treat him and just get him through uh, this particular need so that he can continue to be with us and serve us going forward. We just thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful time of year, that we can enjoy the moderate temperatures to be able to be out more probably than we have been. And we just praise you and thank you that uh, we're, uh, uh, you give us these change of seasons from year to year, always that we can count on it and to realize your continuing presence in it, that you never leave us, that you orchestrate all things and just give us your hand of help, of strength, of love and comfort. In Christ's name, we join now in the prayer that you have taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from an evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, often the poor receive special notice in the scriptures perhaps because they are more vulnerable than most and aware of their need. Also, they are more open to the good news that points to life's meaning. We need not be poor to be grateful for God's bounty, nor do we have to be rich before we can share. Everyone can know the blessings of a generous spirit. We are invited to give as God has blessed you. And we are blessed this morning to have some wonderful music. Pray. 
Brenda, thank you. It's always such a blessing for me to share your beautiful voice with us. Um, you've probably heard the old saying, I'm only one person, what can I do? Who knows, you may even have said that yourself some time along the way. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to start with the Bible figure of Saul, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, which was the ruling body of the Jews. Saul of Tarsus was a Pharisee, the strictest and most demanding of the Jewish sects. Because Saul was so protective of the Jewish faith, he became the leading opponent of the new Christian movement, vowing to do everything that he could to wipe it out and eliminate all of the new converts. As he progresses in his mission, we're going to look at three individuals that impact his effort 
in a significant way. As the scripture tells us, he had done major damage to the new faith in Jerusalem, hunting down and imprisoning or even executing new believers. But that didn't seem to be enough. Acts 9 tells us, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way that he found there. The way was what they were calling the new Christians at that time. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. The first individual that God uses to remake Saul is the Lord Jesus himself. The scripture goes on to describe the impact this encounter has on Saul. He lays in the dirt, blinded and realizing that everything he has ever believed has been wrong. He's led to Damascus to a house where he continues without sight for three days so he can ponder what happened and where he goes from here. During that time, the second individual God uses is a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision saying, go to the straight street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying there now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. The scripture goes on to describe that Ananias knows who Saul is and what he's been doing to Christians and why he's in Damascus. But nevertheless, he goes to Saul, calls him brother, lays hands on him, and restores his sight. As a result, Saul becomes a believer in Christ and immediately begins to preach that he is the Messiah. After an extended period of study and preparation, where Saul, who now goes by his Greek name of Paul, which we're much more familiar with, rebuilds everything he's ever believed and becomes a powerful force for Christianity, converting many Jews in Damascus and elsewhere. He then decided it was time to go to Jerusalem and meet the apostles. The third individual God uses is described in our scripture for the day Acts 9, 26 to 28. Let's take a look at that. When he, Paul, came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord 
and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with him and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Barnabas was willing to stand up for Paul with the disciples and testify to his change. As a result, Paul was accepted by the leadership, preached strongly in Jerusalem, and was eventually launched by them to ultimately become the greatest single force for the growth of Christianity in the known world. I believe there wouldn't be Christians today, including us, if it hadn't been for Paul. But it was facilitated by three individuals, each with a designated role from God to bring Saul along step by step to where the Lord needed him to be to answer his call. The Bible's full of others. Abraham, Noah, Moses, Joshua, David, Elijah, Isaiah. The list goes on and on. Those who were willing to listen to God and respond to the call that he had for each of them. But what about us? Let's come forward to more of our time frame with some stories of individuals answering God's call that may be mo more familiar to us. The first is about Reverend David Wilkerson of Indiana. You may not remember the name, but you'll probably remember the book and the movie called The Cross and the Switchblade. God called Wilkerson from his local church to go to New York City and try to make contact with one of the gangs. How would you have felt if you got that prompting? But Wilkerson responded in faith. He was able to get into one of the most dangerous gangs in New York called the Mau Mau's, led by the notorious leader, Nicky Cruz. Through the miracle of God, Wilkerson eventually converted Cruz with prayer and faith, helped him out of his drug addiction and used him to help others and spearhead a powerful ministry organization to addicts and others called Teen Challenge that Wilkerson had founded. It has reached thousands with healing and is still active in ministering today, 60 years later. A story only God can write. The second story is about Reverend Bob Harrington of Alabama. God called Harrington to go to New Orleans and begin to show up in bars and preach and witness. It may sound crazy, but Harrington did. And through God's touch was so effective at reaching people with the gospel that the people of New Orleans began to try to find out where the pastor was going to be next so they could go and hear him. It grew into a national ministry and Harrington did crusades all around the country. He brought his crusades at Chattanooga in the late 60s. Pastor Phil preached a sermon on faith last month. He talked about 
intellectual faith is one kind of faith we have. And I realized at age 25 that though I had been in church all my life, intellectual faith was all I had. I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus personally. So I began a search that led me to Harrington's crusade. I went several nights that week, and he brought me to full spiritual faith for the first time. Since we're not pastors, these stories are powerful works of God, but probably hard for us to relate to. So story number three is hopefully one that we can connect with a little better. I was on the board of a crisis pregnancy center in New York for many years. At one point, we were working with a group in Watkins Glen, New York, to open a satellite office. We had been having some planning meetings with our board and volunteers with the Watkins group. After the meeting, I noticed that one of our volunteers was talking to one of the Watkins group pretty seriously. After she finished, I went over and inquired about the conversation. It seems that the lady was a former exercise instructor for my friend. In the course of catching up, she informed my friend that since their last encounter, she'd become a Christian. When I asked about how that came about, after some thought, she said, I guess it started one night after class when you asked me what would happen if I invested as much in my spiritual conditioning as I did in my physical conditioning. The question stuck, and God drew me from there to become a believer. So what about all of us? This, this last story seems to hit closer to where we all live, doesn't it? Though we've never going to touch thousands of lives, there's a very good chance we're going to touch individual lives like my friend. How do we do that? By staying open to the quiet leadings of God. We're going to touch individual lives like my friend. How do we do that? By staying open to those quiet leadings of God in our hearts as we have ordinary conversations with them. As we connect with others, we have many opportunities, especially when they're troubled or have needs, to reach out with our words and our actions as God directs. Notice I said, as God directs. It's not our job to be the fixer, but to be the conduit that God works through to do what He knows needs to be done with that person at that time. Colossians 3.12 says, As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are the qualities Jesus wants us to emulate from Him and to live out. We are simply to see others as He did with the same heart 
and then let him act in that person's life. Colossians 4, 5 says, Be wise in the way you act toward others. Make the most of every opportunity. The only way we accomplish that is to listen to those whispers of God that guide us to the right thing at the right time with others. Remember, it does only take one. That's us in link with God. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be open to you, to listen to your guidance and direction as we touch others' lives, friends, family, those that we meet that may have a need that they share with us. Help us to be the conduit for you to speak into others' lives and to give them the word that we hear from you. We're not the ones to do the work. We're simply to be the starter for what you need to be doing in and through them. And help us to always be open to your direction, to your prompting, to your challenge in us to be the, the carriers of Christ's message in our individual world wherever we go. We thank you and praise you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn this morning is a, a familiar one for us Emmaus folks for many years. Pass it on, page 309. around.
us pray. Lord, you've given us a call to be your hands and feet and voices wherever we go in this world around us as representatives of Jesus Christ. Through his guidance, we can be what you need us to be to expand the faith, to share it, to bless others with it, to help heal their hurts and needs. Help us always to be open to your guidance, your direction, your promptings. When we're involved in others' lives that may need to hear what you have for them. We go in peace with your direction, with your strength, with your hope, as we're instruments for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. to serve the Lord.